Embarking on a career in financial advice is akin to setting sail on a vast ocean of responsibility and trust. Those who choose this path hold the financial well-being of their clients in their hands. However, before one can officially don the title of a financial advisor and begin charting courses for clients, a pivotal question arises, do you need a license to give financial advice? Let's unravel this inquiry with a captivating exploration that keeps you anchored till the very end. Firstly, it's essential to comprehend the gravity of the role a financial advisor plays. These professionals do more than just suggest which stocks to pick or how much to save for retirement. They sculpt financial strategies that can define a person's future comfort, security, and even their dreams. Given such significant stakes, it stands to reason that a certain level of oversight is necessary. This is where the concept of licensing comes into play, serving as a safeguard, ensuring that only those adequately equipped with the requisite knowledge and ethical standards can offer financial advice. The requirement for a license to dispense financial advice isn't just a bureaucratic formality. It's a fundamental aspect of consumer protection. Imagine for a moment entrusting your life savings to someone without any verification of their expertise or moral compass. The requirement for advisors to hold a license acts as a first line of defense against fraud and incompetence. In the United States, the precise nature of the financial advice determines the type of licensing required. For instance, professionals who advise on investment portfolios or specific investment actions often need to register with the Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC, or a state regulator, depending on the size of their management asset. This involves obtaining certifications like the Series 65 license, which qualifies individuals as investment advisor representatives. The process to earn these credentials is rigorous, involving extensive exams that cover laws, regulations, portfolio management, and fiduciary responsibilities. But the regulatory landscape doesn't stop there. If a financial advisor wishes to sell specific products, such as insurance or stocks, additional licenses, such as the Series 6 or Series 7, sanctioned by the Financial Industry Regulatory Authority, FINRA, become necessary. Each of these licenses requires passing comprehensive examinations that not only test knowledge, but also ensure the advisor understands ethical obligations and compliance procedures. The complexity of licensing doesn't merely reflect bureaucratic red tape. Rather, it mirrors the diverse needs and risks associated with different types of financial advice. For example, someone specializing in estate planning might need different qualifications compared to another focusing on day trading strategies. This specialization ensures that advisors are not just well-versed in general financial principles, but are also experts in the specific areas they choose to practice. Moreover, obtaining a license is not the end of the road. Maintaining a financial advisory license typically involves ongoing education and adherence to ethical standards. This requirement is crucial in an industry where laws and financial environments are constantly evolving. Continuing education keeps advisors at the forefront of industry standards and best practices, ensuring they provide the most current and effective advice. However, the need for a license goes beyond fulfilling legal requirements. It also builds trust with clients in a world rife with scams and financial missteps. A licensed professional stands out as a beacon of reliability. The credentials tell clients that the advisor not only values compliance with the law, but also commits to ongoing improvement and ethical dealings. This trust is fundamental in relationships that often involve discussing private financial details and long-term financial planning. Yet, it's important to acknowledge that while licenses are indicative of a professional's credibility and compliance, they do not automatically guarantee success or integrity. Like any field, the financial advisory landscape has its share of challenges and controversies. Therefore, clients must do their due diligence, verifying credentials, checking references, and understanding an advisor's approach before committing. In conclusion, while navigating the complex waters of financial advising without a license might seem like a shortcut, it's fraught with risks and legal barriers. Licensing serves as a crucial checkpoint that not only protects consumers, but also elevates the profession's standards. For those pondering a career in financial advice or seeking the counsel of an advisor, understanding the importance of licensing 
is akin to setting the compass for a successful and secure financial journey. As we have seen, this isn't just about following regulations. It's about ensuring a foundation of trust, competence, and ethical practice that defines the very essence of quality financial advice.